It's really helpful to keep in mind a very key distinction at this point. There's a difference between a constructed thing like a car and something that develops like a human being. Things that develop do not come into existence piece by piece. Rather, they are already there from the beginning and they simply unfold and become more mature. A car comes into existence part by part, but that's not how human beings come into existence. Human beings come into existence all at once and gradually their capabilities unfold, but their identities are intact from the beginning, unlike the car. One of the common objections pro-lifers get goes like this. Well, it's just your religious view that the unborn are human, and outside of religion, you can't prove that they are persons with rights. Well, my first question is this. Can you say why anything has value and a right to life in a universe that came from nothing and was caused by nothing? I mean, if human beings are cosmic accidents, they're cosmic accidents at every stage of development. And at least people like Peter Singer are honest about that. But a lot of the people you might be talking to don't realize that they are assuming things about human value that they haven't argued for. And sometimes it's very helpful if you can help them see that they're making these assumptions and present to them a better view of the human person that actually can account for equality and value at every stage of development. Living things have inner natures that determine the kind of things they are, and they are identical to themselves through time and change. So the substance view, for example, says that you are identical to the embryo you once were. You didn't come from an embryo, you once were an embryo, and you are the same being through every stage of development from the beginning of your life until death, you're the same being through all of those changes. So if you are the same being through all of those changes, it follows that if you're intrinsically valuable now, you were intrinsically valuable at every stage of your development, including the embryonic stage. That's the substance view. Living things maintain identity through time and change. Your cat that never learns to meow is still a cat by nature, even though it never functions at its, its full capacity as a, a being that can meow. A dog that is missing a leg is still a dog by nature, but it doesn't follow it stops being a dog just because it can't function at the same capacity as other dogs. In the same way, you as an embryo will not have the same immediately exercisable capacities you will have when you're later in life. For example, as an embryo, you're not going to have the immediate capacity to think abstractly, to solve complex problems, to engage in language, to engage in community with other human beings. But it doesn't follow that because you lack that immediate capacity for those things, that you're not the same being at that stage of development as you are at a more mature stage. No Corvette just shows up on the assembly line and drives its own development forward. But when you were an embryo, you were already driving your own development. It was your inner nature that was driving your development and growth toward maturity. It wasn't that you're put together part by part by an outside being like the Corvette is. Rather, you emerged and became what you were based on your inner nature. That's the substance view of human persons. And that is the philosophical grounding for the pro-life view. We are not constructed things like Corvettes. We are substance things that are defined by our inner natures not the number of parts we might have or functions we can perform. Somebody might come along and say, how can you say that embryo is a living substance when it doesn't even have a brain yet? How can you claim that's a human being with a right to life when there's no brain there? Let me ask a question. Does an embryo need a brain to live? Do you need a brain to live? The answer is yes, you do need a brain to live. But does an embryo need a brain to live? No, an embryo does not need a brain to live because something else coordinates its bodily system so it can function as a substance, as a living being through time and change. Where you need a brain, the embryo doesn't. Something else is giving it its identity through time and change, and we would argue it's its inner nature that was there from the very beginning. 
Unlike a car that isn't there from the time you put the two parts together, you were there from the very beginning. You just had to grow and develop. That's the substance view. We don't allow a 16-year-old to vote, and we don't allow a 13-year-old to drive a car. So what's wrong with saying that embryos don't have the same right to life that they do when they're older? Here's the problem with that. It is confusing natural rights with merely government or what we call positive rights. So, for example, I love going to England. However, though I love going to the UK and love visiting the United Kingdom, I do not have a right to vote in the next UK election. But just because I don't have a right to vote in the next UK election does not mean I don't have a right not to be gunned down in the streets of London anytime I visit Trafalgar Square. I have a natural right not to be unjustly harmed that flows from my nature as a human being and is not dependent on what government says I have or don't have. When we claim the unborn have a natural right to life, here's what we're arguing. We are arguing they are a particular kind of living thing, a substance that has value based on its nature, not based on what government says or what it can do at a performance level. Rather, you have your rights based on the kind of thing you are by nature. That's the idea behind the substance view. If you don't have an inner nature that grounds your identity through time and change, in what sense then are you the same being today as you were then when you were born 18 or more years ago? And the answer is, if you don't have an inner nature that grounds your identity through time and change, we really can't say you're the same being because if all you are is physical, and your physical parts have changed over time, you're not the same being today as you were then. When we say the unborn are substances with a right to life, we're saying that if you are equal and valuable today, and you are identical to the embryo you once were, there's been no substantial change to your nature that would disqualify you from having a right to life then as you do now. That's the substance view. And that view can account for human equality. Other views that base it on traits that come and go cannot. Living things like human embryos are not part-like things like a Corvette or a Mustang. Rather, embryos are substances that maintain their identities through time and change. They are the same being at a later stage of development and maturity as they were when they first began. They did not evolve into human beings from embryos. They were human from the beginning because embryos are identical to the mature adults they, were later, they will later become.